What's going on everybody? Uh, about the time we do a video, I was just getting ready to 3D print something and I thought, hey, I've been asked to do several videos about 3D printing, so let's try it out. So, the purpose of me printing this is I have this bullet here. This is an NOE um, HTC 310-135 round nose. Yeah. This guy right here. And I got the Lyman top punch for this bullet because it was only five bucks and I figured, yeah, might as well. I'm already ordering the mold. Um, but NOE sells a tool where you can use this top punch um, inside of a Lee Universal neck expanding die. Now these, these dies take these uh, different size expanders right here it comes with two of them and they sit together just like that inside the die then you can adjust you know your amount of flare from there using the typical Lee you know adjustment knob up here well I want to make a die that can seat gas checks on these bullets so that way I know they're they're on there good and I'm not getting them on there crooked and all that stuff I know I can use the APP and do that um, Uncle Jim's way, but I just want to give this a shot because why not? So what I want to do is 3D print an adapter that I can shove this into. So there's your seating stem for your, your specific bullet right there. If I copy this right here exactly, and then make a hole in the center so I can pressure fit this up into it, I can use that to you know, run the bullet up into the die and then just use my 309 sizing ram and then that should be able to push this up and then squeeze that gas check right on there. So I'll go through the process of how I go about drawing stuff up like that in CAD and then we'll print it and then we'll try it out. All right, first things first, we need some measurements. Um, like I said, I was going to make this adapter pretty much the same as this cylindrical part here that doesn't have the taper. So we will measure that up. Zero my calipers out here. Okay, now we want millimeters. That's what um, Fusion 360 likes to use, which is the program that I use to draw stuff. So our diameter is going to be 14.25 roughly. 14.26, 25. Our height of the cylinder is going to be 14. I don't call it 14. That's good enough. So we need a cylinder that's 14.25 millimeters in diameter, and then roughly 14 tall. And then the hole in the center of that for the seating stem needs to be 6.7 millimeters. Um, I might do 6.6. .6 because I want this to be a pressure fit up inside of there. So I'll, I'll mow on that a little bit and, and decide how we're gonna do that. And then for depth, we got 10.3. So we'll go 10 and a half deep on that hole. All right, remember all that? Me neither. All right, let's draw it up. Okay, so this is the software that a lot of people use to draw things uh, in 3D, 3D CAD software. It's called Fusion 360, and it's, it's free for personal use. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to do a whole spiel on how to use this software. I'm just going to kind of do it. I'll kind of walk through as I go along. So uh, everything's drawn on planes. I don't know what I just did there. So to start off, you have to start on your bottom plane. So we'll go ahead and make that circle. It's been a while. Create a sketch on this bottom plane. 
make the circle and that was what did I say 14.25 millimeters um, I'm gonna shrink that up a little bit because it tends to grow with your 3d printer unless you have it set you know super precise which I really don't so we'll try 14 millimeters zoom in on that a little bit and here you can kind of orbit around whatever you're doing so you can see this is on that plane everything's drawn in sketches on this program so when you finish that sketch now to make that a cylinder we can click on it press on the press pull button now I can drag this up to make it a three-dimensional shape so you could either type in 14 millimeters or just drag it up like I did so we said it was 14 millimeters tall let me double check that real quick measure twice cut once yep 14 millimeters tall so there is our base cylinder right there this is just going to be a super simple adapter, nothing crazy about it. So now to do the hole in the center that goes down at the top punch slides into, we need to create another sketch. Now it's going to ask you to select what plane or planar face that you want to put the sketch on. We're going to go ahead and go from the top down. We're going to make a circle on this plane. Uh, let me double check my diameter here. 6.7 millimeters. Um, those tend to shrink when you're doing inside holes. So if I want it 6.7, I'll add 0.3 millimeters. So we'll do a 7 millimeter hole. All right, there's that. And now, how deep was that? 10.43 millimeters deep. So we'll finish that sketch. Now you can see that, that that sketch is on that plane on this draw on this model. So we want to put that down inside of our cylinder. I'll go. Let's see, I'm trying to remember how we usually lose a little bit of height. So I'll do 10.6 millimeters. Oops. Undo. Extrude that. Negative 10.6. Uh, we'll do cut through it. Direction on one side. OK. And there it is. So now we have that adapter that should slide right inside of the Oh, what do you call it? The universal expanding die. And that's that's all it is. Super simple drawing. Now it's going to be a pressure fit. So we'll give that a shot. Now in order to put this onto the 3D printer, we have to go over here to Tools. Go to Make and 3D Print. And then we have to select which bodies we want to print. So that would be body one right there. Refinement medium. Uh, don't send a 3D print utility because I want to save it as a STL file. 3D printing, reloading. Oh, let's see, where did, what did I make a new folder? Technical difficulties. Oh, there it is, new folder. So we'll name this. Top punch adapter. And that's where we will save the STL. We'll call it top punch adapter. Save it up. Okay, so this software is called Cura. This is where you take your 3D models and turn them into the G code for your printer. So we'll go ahead and open the file. Top punch adapter, go ahead and open it, and there's your part right there. So ordinarily I would take and 
print out several of these at once because if I have different top punches, I can just leave them pressed into these adapters. Um, but since this is a trial run, and I don't know how it's, everything's going to fit, um, I'm going to go ahead and only print one. Um, I'm going to do 100% infill on this, and what that means is this will be 100% solid plastic. There won't be any honeycomb um, material on the inside because I don't want this to bend or flex or smush or any of that stuff. So that should be good. Everything else should be correct. There's that. We'll go ahead and slice it and it will turn it into a bunch of layers. Now this is only a 15 minute print. That's pretty cool. Um, you can either save save the G-code without previewing it or I like to preview it and make sure everything's going to go according to plan. And this is what the print will look like. So you can see here all those individual layers from the bottom all the way up to the top. So that's exactly how it will print from the bottom to the top, right like that. Okay, so go ahead and save the file. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my Octopi, and I will see you back over there. All right, so here is my 3D printer. Uh, you got your, your hot end right here. Uh, these two are both part cooling fans, and they they have ducting that goes down to, to cool off the filament as it comes out of the uh, nozzle here once it hits the bed. Um, your roll of filament is up there on top. We're just using green. I don't really care what color this thing is. But it's warming up right now. So in order to start the print, I had... There's a couple ways you can do this. You can throw an SD card in here with the file on it. Um, I don't particularly like doing that. Uh, MIG helped me set up the uh, Raspberry Pi and you can control this printer from your Raspberry Pi which is what I did. So we can come here, I have an app on my phone that controls this. So all I gotta do is find that G-code file that I uploaded. Uh, must have to refresh it, hang on. There it is. CE3 stands for Creality Ender 3. That's what model of printer I have. Top punch adapter. So you just click on that. Click on the print button. And it will start the print. Now first things first, it has to warm up the print bed. And then the tool up here has to hit that temperature and then it will start the print. Um, the print bed is at 65 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit off the top of my head. Um, the hot end up here is at 215 degrees Celsius, which that's that's hot. Uh, you're melting plastic, pretty much. So, yeah, once those are both up to temp, you'll see it start to move around, and then it'll start to print. Okay, here any second now it should start moving around and the first thing it will do is home out each axis. There it goes, axis. So there it just homed out the X, now it's homing out the Y. Now it's homing out the Z axis, which is your up and down axis. Once they find their homes, it'll start going to town. Now this first line here is just a purge line. Um, clears out any crap you have in your nozzle, kind of cleans it out. And now it will print your outside skirt. Uh, this is just another kind of a purge thing in the beginning, I believe. It'll print five lines around your, uh, or three lines around your design just to kind of have a boundary I guess and clear out your nozzle but there it's doing the first layer right there I believe on the second layer the part cooling fans will turn on and make a bunch of noise 
Yep, there they go. So this is layer number two. It'll do the outside walls first, and then it will do one inside wall, and then it will do the infill. And that inside wall is to connect your infill to the outside wall, pretty much. So yeah, we'll let this run, and in about 15 minutes, we'll have an adapter. All right, so here's the finished product. Like I said, it looks a little bit goofy, like it's squished out right there. And that's where that inside hole stopped and this became a solid object from here down. Um, you'll see that at the very bottom, at the first layer, it tends to squish out a little bit. If you can see it that well in the light, hang on. That's called elephant's foot and it's that very first layer when you're printing, when it squishes the filament out of the glass, it has nowhere to go, so it goes out and it makes your first layer or two, usually just your first layer, um, a little bit wider. And there are settings in your slicer that can compensate for that. So let's pull some measurements on this and see how close we were. And we were shooting for 14, oh boy, I dropped it. We were shooting for 14 millimeters. Outside diameter. Holy crap, look at that. 14, dead nuts, 13.99, that's awesome. Now I would imagine it squished out a little bit right here where that bulge is. So yeah, 14.29. Yeah, 14.3. Uh, what were these again, sorry. I think these were 14.3. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 14.25. So in theory, that should drop right into this die. Um, so for this, that dimension's good. Height, like I said, is usually a little bit short, 13.7. Um, that has to do with that first layer squish again. Uh, let's check our inside diameter here. 6.7776 Where's that top punch? Ooh, might need to shrink that up a hair. Yep. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so I couldn't find my Loctite. Um, I know I lent it to a friend so we could mount a scope with it, and I know he gave it back, but I have no idea where I put it. So I just went ahead and, and made a modification to my part. This is the old one here. Six point seven seven millimeters, six point seven eight nine. I shrunk that hole up a little bit to six point eight in the program and that shrunk it up to six point five. So this it's 0.2 millimeters smaller than this top punch. Oh, that's tight. Might have to chamfer that a little bit. That's what I want, though. That's good. That's good. Okay. Voila. Little unique case loop and some sandpaper on a cleaning rod. I squished it right in. Now, this is very tight, but at least if I need to get it out, in the future, I can. So, one second here. Oh, you would too. Oh, there it goes. Then we'll pick one of these to throw on top of that. I don't know if you saw that or not. 
But yeah, there's the top punch right there. Throw in this larger one. Put your stem in. So now, you should have a nice stop. That moves up and down freely. Excellent. Let's put it in the press and try some out. Okay, let's try this. Um, I already ran into a potential issue. So we got the gas check halfway started on the bullet. Yeah, that's my issue. Why is the bullet sticking in that die? <laughs> let's figure that one out. But, uh, where is the camera? Gas check is seated. There's some shaving going on, but that's all right. Appears to be nice and square. Let's try another one here. Okay, so I got kind of a rhythm going. Um, it's still sticking in that top punch. But if I don't crank it home super hard, it comes out pretty easy. And I can feel when it when it bottoms out on the bullet. Yeah, that one came right off. Maybe it just needs a little bit of break in. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? So. Ooh, that one's getting to shave real bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're coming out easier now. You know, I think I might have just been sending it a little too hard. Too much sending. See, that bullet's pretty crooked, and it may not catch that. No, it did. But they, they straighten themselves out, and they get on there pretty good. There we go. Now maybe I broke it in enough to where they're just going to drop right out. I pushed that one pretty hard. Just get them started. Squish them on. And there we go. Flip over a few more gas checks. Just kind of stage those up a little bit. Sorry if this is super boring. But this is kind of a a dual purpose video, the 3D printing and the seating a gas check without um, having to buy the gas check seating die, which is also out of stock. I've been waiting for that one to come in stock too over at NOE, but it's it's been a while and I'm I'm sick of waiting, so I made my own. So yeah, now I, once I get all these gas checks seated on these, we'll seat a few of them. Or sorry, we'll size a few. Oh, oh geez. Size a few of these bullets. See how they look after that. I, I'd like to know that the gas checks are all in the same spot. They're fully seated before I size them. That way we're not going to have any uh, variation in bullet length. Yeah, I like this. That's nice. Alright, let me finish these off. And now here's another cool part of this. I've already got my 309 sizing ram in there. Or the push through ram diddly doodad. So now if I just switch out my top die with this guy. No, I'm not using the APP right now. Cranky. Cranky! I can just grab the ones that already have the gas check on them, and I'm not worried about the gas check being crooked or not getting seated all the way as it's sizing. I can just grab them, push them on up through there. And it should 
seat that gas check on there real nice like crimp it on I mean I'm gonna lose my <laughs> I'm gonna lose my uh, catch cup here yep there it goes all right so let me take you out of here and show you a few of these that have been having the gas checks crimped. Keep them separated. Whoa. No, you don't. Sorry. And there they are. Now they're a little dirty from the size die, that stuff wipes right off. I'm not losing powder coat or any of that nonsense. It's just a little dirty. But yeah, there's some nicely seated gas checks. And they look to be pretty pretty good lengthwise for the bullets. So yeah, that's that. I will continue doing these until they're all done. And I've got even more underneath my bench. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video.